This is the 7900 XTX running Cyberpunk Phantom Liberty at the Ray Tracing Ultra preset. And it seemed like we were getting around 90 frames per second. I mean, sure, FSR2 quality is on, but wait, how the heck is it getting, uh, well, about 85 frames per second right now? And why does the frame rate dip massively when I move my camera quickly? Why am I dropping down into the 40s? Well, that's because the game's only sort of running at about, well, back up to around 84 frames per second now. What's going on? Well, if you have a 7000 series GPU, let me kick off this overlay so it gets out of the way and kick on a different overlay. This is AMD Fluid Motion Frames. It's available currently only on the 7000 series GPUs and only if you download a specific beta driver. This enables frame generation in pretty much any DX11 or DX12 game. So even though right now FSR3 is only available in Immortals of Avium and for Spoken, which let's face it, people are a lot less interested in right now than games like Cyberpunk or Starfield. This sort of enables FSR3. Now, what do I mean by sort of? Well, Couple of things. First, let me kick that overlay back on. And why am I using AMD's overlay? Couple of reasons. Number one, because actually in this version of the overlay, it can tell you the frame gen lag. In other words, that's not the average uh, total latency for the PC right now. The frame gen lag is the additional milliseconds of latency being added by frame generation right now. And currently it's about 23 milliseconds, which, you know, is somewhat noticeable, but isn't the end of the world. However, notice, again, I move my mouse quickly and watch the FPS numbers. 48, I'm gonna stop moving my mouse quickly. And we are back to around 95, actually about 98 now. So again, what the heck is going on? This seems really strange. Well, here's the thing. So. What's go what, what this is doing, what, what uh, AMD Fluid Motion Frames is doing is applying interpolated frames through the driver, again, to pretty much any DX11 or DX12 game. You just click a button and your frame rate goes up. It's pretty cool. However, because it's done through the driver level, it doesn't have access to things like motion vectors that the game would be feeding into the actual FSR3 implementation. Which means if things, you know, started moving quickly, it would probably have a very difficult time maintain, maintaining image quality at fast speeds. Which means their solution, at least currently, again, this is just a beta version of the product, is to just disable the feature on fast mouse movements. Now, unfortunately, the time when you would most want a high frame rate is when your mouse is moving quickly <laughs> because that's uh, when you would want, you know, the increased uh, motion fluidity because, you know, when you're uh, not moving quickly, you don't really need that high frame rate. By the way, I should also mention that you're watching a 60 frames per second YouTube video right now, which means that you cannot really experience the frame rate difference that I'm experiencing in person. And unfortunately, unlike FSR3, which you could probably run on your GPU if you have one of the games that supports it, well, this supports pretty much any DX11 or DX12 game. This only supports the 7000 series GPUs. So if you don't have one of those, unfortunately you cannot try this out right now, uh, even if you have an earlier AMD product like the 6000 series. Anyway, uh, it's still a very interesting thing though, right? Uh, the fact that we could do this. Um, but again, I, I just really find the fact that we need to be able to, um, uh, basically not move the mouse quickly to kind of defeat the purpose. Now on slow mouse movements and like standing still, the car is driving by and things like that, I'm not noticing, you know, huge amounts of motion artifacts or anything, but again, it's kind of, kind of silly. Also, I should mention it has, um, the opposite, uh, interaction with V-Sync 
to uh, what we're getting from FSR3. So in my FSR3 video, I explained that AMD wants you to use VSync. So hopefully you're hitting your monitor's maximum refresh rate uh, and actually frame rate capping at half the monitor's maximum refresh rate and then using VSync cap uh, when you're using FSR3. At least in its current state, AMD Fluid Motion frames are ideally going to be um, not using VSync and instead relying on variable uh, refresh rate um, a a as you go. Now I have decided to turn on a controller. So I'm using a controller now. I just switched away from my mouse and I'm curious. Yeah. Okay. So spinning the, the controller quickly also triggers, uh, the low, um, the low frame rate, uh, not low frame rate, but the disables the, the fluid motion. So, um, I was wondering if this would be something that would work better on controllers. And I actually think that might be the case because you can see here, if, if I just kind of run around uh, steering and things like that, um, you know, the, the quick the quick turnaround, not too crazy terrible, um, and it does kick back on. But again, that seems to be the biggest downside to the technology. Now, I'd love to show you the image quality here, but again, you really can't pick up on the high, high frame rate smoothness in a YouTube video. You just can't. However, I could, right now I'm on the RT Ultra preset um, uh, with DLSS, uh, sorry, FSR2 quality. However, uh, we could do things like disable motion blur and um, things like that if we want to try to get at least some look at the image quality, maybe turn off frame grain and chromatic aberration as well. Uh, if we want to get uh, something of a better better look at it in motion. I think with those features disabled, especially the motion blur uh, disabled, I thought the car in motion moving by did show a little bit more uh, motion artifacting. And again, I'm going to try kind of panning the camera with a with a controller. By the way, if you see screen tearing, um, again, I'm capturing video at, for a YouTube video at a locked 60 frames per second. And again, um, I'm not going to enable VSync on this. So uh, yeah, we're just going to, the, the screen tearing wouldn't necessarily be happening if you were on a variable refresh rate display. Uh, but again, this is kind of what we're seeing panning, panning through here. I'm, I'm kind of interested in looking at the vehicles driving by, seeing if you see any kind of judder on their motion. I feel like I do see a little bit of judder on the motion. So in other words, this doesn't feel like a perfect implementation or anything like that. Um, we could turn fluid motion frames off now and take a look at the difference. So with fluid motion frames off, uh, you can see now that we're about uh, 50 frames per second or so. Um, and again, I feel like actually the cars driving by in motion don't have as much judder on them. So while this seems like a very cool idea and a very cool feature, it's not necessarily... Um, I think where we need it to be yet. But again, if it does mature, um, I'd be very interested what they can do with it. The downside though, is I'm not sure how far you can go with this uh, without getting the motion vector data for games. So I think in the end, the better option would be to have something, um, you know, just get FSR3 like officially implemented in, in more games. Uh, now, I was thinking it might be interesting to drive around in the vehicle a little bit um, because, let's see, let's actually kick the uh, fluid motion frames back on. And I'm curious about um, if driving the vehicle is going to trigger um, the, the camera, uh, sorry, the, the fluid motion frames off because turning the vehicle does not have a, you know, it's a keyboard input not a mouse, uh, here, I guess I'll turn around at least. Um, but it's not a mouse input, right? It's also not a controller input. I'm using my keyboard, keyboard to turn. So here we can at least move at high speeds uh, with the fluid motion frames enabled. But again, you're getting uh, 60 frames per second YouTube capture, so you're still not, uh, again, getting to, to really see it in person. Um, again, in motion, like I said, I, I, I do feel like there's a little bit of, of judder to things as they pan quickly. Um, so again, not really uh, perfect smoothness. So overall conclusion on this is that it's a very cool idea and I do hope that it matures. Again, remember this is a preview build of this and it is very possible that we could get something um, 
you know, uh, better <laughs> in the future. Uh, but yeah, with the with the main thing being that if it just disables on a quick mouse motion, it, it seems fairly silly. And um, again, like I said, I do feel like there's also a little bit of motion judder, and um, I'm staring at frame rate counters while driving. So uh, that's pretty much that. Uh, it is a cool feature, but a lot of people were asking me to test it out, and I, I do think that in its its current state, I don't think feel too bad that it's not available. Also, I should mention, again, I, I can't remember if I said this earlier in the video, currently the performance metrics don't display correctly unless you're using AMD's own software overlay, which is, again, what we're seeing here. If I try to use, like, MSI Afterburner, for example, it's not going to work. Um, to, to actually show us the uh, the frame rates. So if you're not aware, um, if you go to the performance tab in your uh, AMD driver software, so if you press Alt-R, it opens your AMD driver software in the game. You can go to the overlay and you can kick it on and off, although there is a hotkey for that. And the hotkey is, uh, what is it? Control-Shift-O, I believe. Let me try that out. Control-Shift-O, yep. Control-Shift-O is the overlay. By the way, I really do like AMD's overlay, and I love that at least this version of the drivers has the um, the frame gen lag built in. I'm actually curious if that's going to work in an FSR 3 uh, game, so I think my next job is I'm going to test out FSR 3 on some AMD GPUs, including using this driver on the 7000 series and seeing if that frame, drag la uh, frame gen lag uh, works. Maybe I can uh, throw a couple side-by-sides in here if I have time as well at the end of the video. I can't stress enough that while you watch the side-by-side -side here, you remember you're walk watching a locked 60 frames per second YouTube capture of a variable refresh rate experience that was not at a locked 60 frames per second, so judder and screen tearing. In other words, like, I don't know how useful this really is, but I figured people would want to see at least one side by side. We can at least see some performance numbers here. Uh, and it, so it is interesting that the base frame rate, which you can see underneath the overlay reported by the actual benchmark, is a bit lower on the right hand side. So there's a bit of an underlying performance cost and then the generation happens. But the generation does almost double the actual uh, frame rate, which is certainly interesting. I also don't think I mentioned earlier in the video that this preview is also not compatible with HDR. So another little bit of a, a downside to it. But anyway, Anyway, my overall thoughts on this is that uh, if they could make it actually work well in motion on a fast mouse movement, this might actually be something pretty interesting. And it is currently just a preview, so I am interested to see what they do in the future, but I think in its current state, don't feel too bad if you can't play around with this. But again, very interested where this goes in the future as a potentially cool feature.